We saw Gigi Jackson, Scottie Pippen Jr., Cam Spencer, Jalen Wells, Jake LaRavia, but none bigger, figuratively and literally, than Zach Eady. The first round pick made his debut in Salt Lake City Summer League. We got a lot to take away from this game. It was the Grizzlies versus the Jazz. We're going to break down Zach E's performance, Scotty Pippen Jr., G, a whole bunch more on this edition of Locked On Grizzlies. Let's lock in. You are Locked On Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everyone, and welcome back to Locked On Grizzlies. I am your host today, DeMichael Cole, beat writer for the Commercial Appeal right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Going solo today is Joe Mullinax, as he tends to do on those late games. He's getting the day off, uh, so uh, you're stuck with just me today. This episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Make every moment more as playoffs wind down. The sports stop sporting like we want them to. So, But this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. All you have to do is visit FanDuel.com to get started. Uh, we got a lot to get started with on today's shows. The Grizzlies, We finally got some Grizzlies basketball, and it was fun. The Grizzlies lost uh, 97 to 95 against the Utah Jazz in an overtime thriller against what I feel like two are two of the most talented uh, summer league rosters out there. But before we get into all that, make sure you continue to tune in to Locked On Grizzlies wherever you listen to uh, or wherever you watch podcasts. That's Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you listen, wherever you watch, like YouTube. Locked On Grizzlies is there. So make sure you continue to like, comment, rate, review, subscribe. And all of those good things to so all things locked on Grizzlies. But we got to start this show talking about the big man in the middle, the number nine overall pick for the Memphis Grizzlies that everybody had something to say about. Whether you liked the pick, like some of you did, whether you were meh, like some of us were, or you're like Kristen Peake, who Joe Mullinax doesn't really just think too fondly of, when she said this is one of the worst picks she's ever seen. Zach Eady had something to prove in his first matchup, not just because it was his debut game and always playing with the Grizzlies and all that, but across from him was Walker Kessler, starting center, Utah Jazz. Uh, This isn't just any other big. Walker Kessler has averaged 2.4 blocks through his first two NBA seasons. He's entering his third NBA season, and he's playing summer league basketball, and he's a player who is – Played decently well in the NBA. Again, 2.4 blocks per game over the last two seasons. That's second in the entire league over that stretch. So you're talking about one of the league's best shot blockers. Uh, another seven-footer. And welcome to welcome to the NBA, Zach Eady. That's your first matchup. Zach Eady had more points than him. Zach Eady had more rebounds than him. Didn't have more blocks. I think Walt Kessler finished with five blocks. Zach Eady finished with four. But four was plenty enough for me to see uh, enough in this game from Zach Eady. So let's get into his performance a little bit uh, throughout this game. Again, the Grizzlies lost 97-95. Recapping the game a little bit, uh, it was 90-90 to uh, going into the overtime period. So how a summer league overtime period works right now is there's a target score. Uh, And the target score is seven points in overtime. So since the game was tied at 90, the first team to 97 uh, would win the game. It was 95-95 when Keontae George uh, got to the free throw line, which was a common thing throughout the game. I mean, he only shot 5 of 21, but he finished with 30 points uh, because he got a lot of free throw attempts. And he made a lot of them as well. But uh, Keontae George got to the free throw line, nailed his last two free throw attempts. Jazz win 97-95. But what transpired in between that time? Starting with Zach Eady, because that's what we're going to focus on in the first segment. Uh, if you're not watching on YouTube, uh, the segment breakdown, we're going to talk about Scotty Pippen Jr. a lot in our second segment. I got a lot to say about not just his performance, but a big picture thing that a lot of you might want to hear. And then third segment, another big picture takeaway, uh, more so on Gigi Jackson. I think that's going to be a great conversation as well. So make sure you stay tuned for both of those things as we get into them later on in the show. But starting with Zach Eady, we saw everything we needed to see in one game. 
he set some hard screens. I mean, early in the game, there was a, a mid-range free throw line jumper. You you go watch one of uh, Scottie Pippen Jr.'s first baskets of the game where Zach Eadie sets a, sets a screen for him near the three-point line and creates so much space. Scottie Pippen Jr. is basically freely moving from the three-point line all the way up to the free throw line. And he, he I mean, it was a it was a layup type shot for him. He knocked it down, wasn't contested, wide open. And I'm just thinking, like, man, eventually that's going to be John Morant. Teams ain't going to leave him open in that situation. He's going to be able to dump it off to Edie for the easiest dunk in the world. Or he's going to be able to kick it to Desmond Bain in a corner uh, or Marcus Smart in a corner or Vince Williams in the corner for the easiest shot imaginable. So, I mean, watching Zach Edie all 7'4", 300 pounds of him, set screens and just create so much space. Uh, for Scottie Pippen Jr. in this game uh, was noteworthy to me. But it wasn't just that. I mean, the big man dived on the floor you know, for a loose ball. He even got his hands dirty. With, uh, he got a double technical and, and with Keontae George of the Utah Jazz. In the second quarter, uh, I think Bryce Sensabaugh uh, knocked down Jake LaRavia on the uh, on the floor, and, and Zach Eady was the first player over there, and he gave Sensabaugh a little bump. And that led to, you know, all the players coming together and whatnot, double technicals for Keontae George and Zach Eady. But Eady did his share of talking. He, he dunked on Walker Kessler. After, Kessler got him first on the block. He blocked his shot, uh, and he dunked on him right after. He got the offensive board, dunked on him, and, and put his hand on his head, which is, you know, if you're not familiar, that's the, the on-his-top celebration when that uh, a lot of the guys use when they dunk on players. So the confidence was there. The performance, 14 points, 15 rebounds, four blocks. It was there 7 of 12 shooting from the field. Uh, hurt his ankle early in the game, returned, still played 30-plus minutes. I mean, a strong performance all around from Zach Eady. I think we saw everything we needed to see, four offensive rebounds. I mean, we talked about it. When Steven Adams was healthy, the Grizzlies were the best offensive rebounding team in the NBA. Now, first game, you see this guy get four offensive boards, none bigger than the one at the end of regulation. The Grizzlies were down 90 to 88. And before that offensive rebound, by the way, he had arguably his worst play of the game. Zach E with the Grizzlies uh, down one point had a chance for a wide open put back dunk. And he missed it. It clanked off the back iron as he tried to put it back. Uh, it would have put the Grizzlies up one with less than 10 seconds left. Missed the wide open dunk. And at the time, I'm thinking, man, this is going to overshadow his performance, which at the time, I think he had 12 points, 12 boards. So I was like, this is going to overshadow a double double for him. But the Grizzlies ended up being down two a little bit later in the game, 90 to 88. And uh, it was, I think, 0 0.8 seconds left. Uh, so at that time, Memphis knew that, hey, we got to get, you know, a one make one basket, and then uh, intentionally miss the second free throw. They intentionally miss the second free throw, uh, throw it off the backboard, and, I mean, who's there? Zach Eady uh, moves two guys out of the way, tips it back in, and the Grizzlies got to overtime. So uh, the offensive rebounding, you know, the screen setting, the finishing around the rim, and, again, it's just one game because uh, what you're going to notice is in this game, I think it was 95-95. The Grizzlies had 95, and they were up 95-93. They, they had several opportunities to win this game and score the last basket. And uh, Zach E did not get a lot of touches uh, throughout overtime, and maybe he was a little tired. And, and you know, I have to go back and look to see if he was as forceful and trying to demand position uh, over the course of that time. But the point is he did not get a lot of touches, and that just can't be the case because at Purdue – they weren't going possessions without uh, Zach E's hands uh, touching the basketball. So uh, that's something that Memphis is going to have to adjust to. And quite frankly, I think when you get John Moran on the floor and the Desmond Banks of the world, uh, they're going to know, hey, big big fella got to touch touch the ball. Uh, and and that's going to make everything easier on themselves. So uh, we saw they, they kind of went away from him. You know, kind of got froze out of the game playing late in the game. But all in all, Super impressive performance. I think this is one of those performances where if you were of the mind that oh, this might not be the guy that you need to get uh, at number nine, breathe out just a little bit. Not only because there's a lot more games played, there's going to be different types of offenses. I still want to see some of those other dynamic guards. I'll try to put Zach e in space and whatnot. But four blocks, I mean, he was talking trash. He, he had that swagger. He was finishing uh, around the rim completely 
completely promising performance uh, from Zach Eady. I think if you're a Grizzlies fan, this is exactly what you wanted to see. And now it's just about building on it from here. You know, what happens next? Uh, I think the Grizzlies got to just be more forceful and getting him the ball. Uh, and we've seen the defensive impact. We've seen the rebound and we've seen the screen setting, all the dirty work stuff. He excelled at in his first game. And that's what the Grizzlies are going to need later on, especially when the real games get here uh, come October and whatnot. So that's Zach Eady up to this point. Uh, I think we got a good, good showing from him. But now we got to talk about another Grizzlies player that had a good showing, and that's Scotty Pippen Jr. But before we talk about Scotty Pippen Jr., today's episode of Locked On Grizzlies is brought to you by BetterHelp. Listen here, BetterHelp is the place to go uh, for all of your your help needs out there. Because simply put, if you've benefited from ther- therapy, you know, in the past, uh, BetterHelp is another option that you should suggest. Uh, to, to people out there, because when I think of better help, here's one thing that comes to mind for me, comparison. And comparison for us can be the thief of joy because it's easy to envy other people's lives. It's easy to look at them in basketball and say, hey, you know, yeah, Zach, you gave us 14 and 15, but did you see Khalil Ware the other night? He had 26 and 11, and it kind of takes your joy away. And that's, you know, a basketball example. But in real life, therapy can help you focus on what you want instead of what others have so you can start living your best life and be completely happy with the things that are happening around you. So if you've benefited from therapy, make sure uh, and you've benefited from BetterHelp. Tell some other people about it. I love BetterHelp. And if you're starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge if things aren't working out for you. So stop comparison and stop focusing and start focusing with BetterHelp. That's all you got to do right now. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA to get 10% off your first month. Again, that's BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA. Get 10% off of your first month. Come up here on Locked On Grizzlies. Let's talk to Scottie Pippen Jr. He had a promising performance. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back to Locked on Grizzlies, everyone. I am DeMichael Cole, beat writer here for the Commercial Appeal in Memphis, Tennessee. So in the first segment, we talked about Zach Eady, right? Great performance for Zach Eady, 14 points, 15 boards, uh, the blocks, uh, the offensive boards, the putback, dunking on Walker Kessler, all that good stuff. But early in the game, Scottie Pippen Jr. set the tone. And... I sent out a tweet or a post on X, you know, formerly Twitter, so sometimes you'll catch me still saying tweet. But I made a post on X. I'm going to read it verbatim, and then I'm going to get into it a little bit. Um, The post said, I'm not going to spend too much time this summer telling people Scottie Pippen Jr. is legit. At this point, either you know or you don't. Memphis doesn't have to look far for its next backup point guard, period. Locked on Grizzlies listeners, every day is, you know, for the last few months. This isn't news to you. I've been out on Scottie Pippen Jr. for a while. The pace he plays with, the defensive intensity. What we saw in this first summer league game is a two way beast. 21 points, and he was he was efficient. In doing, in doing his work, like he was very efficient. I mean, 8 of 14 shooting from the field, made one of his two three-point attempts as well, finished with five assists, and then the three steals stood out to me. Yeah, it's summer league, and you get more fouls, so you can be more aggressive defensively. But, um, I mean, he was hounding Keontae George. I'm talking about picking up three-quarters court, a half court, uh, sliding his feet. There were a couple foul calls, and you know, he, he, he got a little handsy a couple times, but – The point is, that's kind of what you need out of a backup point guard. Scottie Pippen Jr. can score, he can facilitate, and he can set the tone. When when, when John Morant, you know, goes out of the game, you're going to need someone who's going to play, what, probably 15 minutes. That player's going to have to set the tone. Player's going to have to come in and and be someone who, you know, uh, can, can get under the opponent's skin you know, uh, with defensive pressure and things like that. And I'm not 
right now, um, you know, saying that he should overtake Derrick Rose. Scottie Pippen Jr. is the backup point guard over Derrick Rose. But from a long-term standpoint, the Grizzlies don't have to look far. Derrick Rose doesn't have a lot of the NBA years left. Scottie Pippen Jr. does. We've seen, you know, uh, how this situation played out with Vince Williams from his two-way deal, uh, from, you know, the two-way deals of other players in the past, you know, whether it was uh, John Conchar or Gigi Jackson even. Uh, the Grizzlies will award guys on two-way deals, and right now that's what Scotty Pippen Jr. is on, and we'll get more to that in a second. But getting into the performance, I mean, I love the pace that he plays with on the offensive end. You know, he, he's not rushed. And I've seen a couple people say it, and I've thought it as well. Like when you watch him from a pace standpoint, decision making is a little bit different. But from the way he just maneuvers around the basketball floor in the offensive end, looks like Tyus Jones. He looks he looks like Tyus Jones when he's just maneuvering around the screens and getting to his spots. Now you know the decision making is a little bit different. He's a little more turnover prone, which pretty much everybody is, because Tyus Jones has paced the NBA and assist the turnover ratio the uh, last five six years. But at the same time, he's also more score than Tyus Jones. Uh, but Scottie Pippen Jr. has game. He fits the Grizzlies, and part of his game, I think we talked about it. You know, uh, just before the show, the fact that he's going to help make the game easier for other players. Uh, we saw some of that with Zach Eady in this game, uh, as well as Cam Spencer. Didn't really get to talk about him in the first segment, but came out, made three big three-pointers, 11 points coming off the bench. Uh, the shooting profile is already translated for him. Jalen Wells didn't knock down his, uh, but he was taking the shots. But Cam Spencer was already knocking down the three-point shots. But Scottie Pippen Jr. did a great job of getting all his teammates involved, as well as making sure he he got his, because 8 of 14 shooting. I think he was 8 of 12 and missed his last two shots, too. So, uh Take that into consideration with how good he was. But then it was the defensive end, the two-way, right? Keontae George shot 5 of 21 in this game. Man, he finished with 30 points, and you're going to see all the made free throws on the highlight reel because he wasn't scoring a lot because Scottie Pippen Jr. was hounding him. And when I say hounding him, I'm talking about, again, picking him up uh, just and, and making every shot tough. So – it leads me into the, the conversation because a lot of people are saying, man, that's that's who needs to be on the 15 man roster, right? Like Scotty Pippen Jr. needs to be on a 15 man roster. And to that, I have a I have a solution. I have a solution to that problem. And I think it's one that many of you probably will agree with. Before I give you that solution, I want to ask you a question. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest sports story without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, which is your team each and every day. Now let's get into this last point on Scotty Bibber Jr. This whole thing with the two-way contract and all that. People are saying, oh, you know, he's on a two-way deal. Like, um, the Grizzlies need to put him on the 15-man roster. Guess what? No, they don't. No, they don't. They do not need to put Scotty Pippen Jr. on the 15-man roster right now. And I am as high on Scotty Pippen Jr. as many of you. Like, that's, that's common knowledge. This is easily a situation where if if you're for the baseball fans out there, you know, uh, in, in baseball, you know, we call it, uh, you know, time manipulation, service time manipulation. You have rookie guys and you hold them a little bit longer just because uh, you can get more time out of them uh, con contractually and whatnot. But in basketball, the thing about being on a two way deal, which Scotty Pippen is on the second year of his two way deal. The thing about being on a two way deal is. You get up to 50 games on the active NBA roster. The point that I'm making is October, November, December, January, and even into early February. You can keep Scottie Pippen Jr. on the roster and have him play or be active in pretty much every single game. And he still, there still wouldn't be a decision that needs to be made until February. So now you give yourself optionality from the standpoint of, oh, if a certain player gets hurt, or if a certain player is underperforming, 
then it makes it easier to make that decision. Or you can even make a trade to free up a spot. And then you bring Scotty Pippen Jr. on. Why now? You don't need to add him to the 15-man roster right now because you add him to the 15-man roster right now. Where's Luke Kennard? It's going to go if you plan on re-signing him because that's going to be the 15th spot. The Grizzlies have 14 players under standard contracts right now. If you say, hey, let's promote Scotty Pippen Jr., that takes up your 15th spot. And you're basically saying, Luke Kennard, sign art. Don't need you anymore. See you when we see you. Why would you do that when you can keep both? And then you can get to January, February, and someone's underperforming. You say, okay, yeah, trade deadline. Let's trade this guy. Create a spot for Scotty Pippen Jr. Boom. Problem solved. I think that's the easy solution in this situation. Don't get too caught in the moment and say, oh, he needs a spot right now on the 15-man roster because you don't have to. You have no reason to rush the process. The only thing that needs to be figured out is it needs to be done this season. His two-way contract will expire at the end of the season because you can't have players on two ways uh, for more than two seasons. Uh, so his contract will expire. That'll be that. So you, 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 the best option is to handle it in the regular season, give him one of those four-year contracts that you gave to, you know, uh, you know, Gigi Jackson, Vince Williams, and whatnot. And I think that handles the situation perfectly. You're done with it at that point. But speaking of Gigi Jackson, uh, we're gonna talk about him a little bit in the next segment as well. But before we get to talking about Gigi Jackson, I want to remind you that today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. Look, I love sports, and I love sports so much that I really don't like when sports stop. So when the playoffs are winding down, there's no more NHL playoffs. There's no more NBA playoffs. We get fewer games. A lot of baseball right now, a lot of WNBA. And the sports aren't sports like I want them to because we just don't have a lot of options. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want because all I got to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood on everything that's going on. And remember, this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every single day all summer, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com right now and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Uh, visit FanDuel.com to take advantage of all those opportunities right now. Coming up here next on Locked on Grizzlies, we got to talk about Gigi Jackson's game as well. There are some notable things that I took away from his performance. So stay tuned for that. Welcome back to Locked on Grizzlies, everyone. Uh, recapping the show so far, in the first segment, we talked about Zach Eady and his performance so far. A promising debut. I liked what I saw. Then we talked about Scotty Pippen Jr. Speaking of like what I seen, uh, I, again, very high on this guy as the next uh, backup point guard for the Grizzlies long term. I think there's it's only a matter of time before he's on the standard roster. Uh, but it doesn't have to happen right now. It does not have to happen until in, during the regular season. So uh, the Grizzlies are in a good situation there. But still, you know, only one summer league game played by Scotty Pippen Jr., but I think the eye test and the sample size going back into last regular season will tell you that it's, a, it's okay to to pretty much put him as an option for the Grizz, future Grizzlies backup point guard. But another guy who shined towards the end of the regular season last season and has a lot of eyes on him in summer league is Gigi Jackson. Gigi Jackson made the all-rookie uh, second team. Gigi Jackson had a terrific rookie year, averaged over 14 points per game, shot over 42% from the field. In his words, had the best year shooting the basketball of his life from three-point range, over 35% on three-pointers. And if you wanted to be nitpicky about Gigi Jackson's rookie year, the one thing that you would have pointed out was efficiency. You would say, oh, 6'9 guy shooting 42%, like, uh, mm, yeah, 6'9 guy averaging just 1.2 assists despite having the ball in his hands a lot, yeah. Not really liking those numbers. Those are the numbers to be neat picky about. Now, y'all know I like to preface some, some of the things I say about these guys with what should be understood, you know, before I get into these explanations. And one of the things that should be understood when we talk about Gigi Jackson is I've been a big proponent of the talent of this dude all the way back since last summer league. Like, I think I saw someone in our uh, YouTube comments say uh, basically that, 
you know, we're sleeping on Gigi Jackson or something like that. And then another comment, shout out to that comment, basically saying, um, have you been watching Locked on Grizzlies? Because quite frankly, I've been high on Gigi Jackson for a while. I went to South Haven last December and and talked with Gigi Jackson and, and had an episode here on Locked on Grizzlies, basically telling people, like, it's only a matter of time because that, that young dude was putting on a show down there in South Haven uh, for the Memphis Hustle and having a terrific uh, – Season where he probably is going to win G League Rookie of the Year, you know, if he doesn't get bumped up to the Grizzlies roster. But with all that being said, that's the good. Now let's pick apart this game a little bit. Because at the end of the day, you got to be honest with yourself. And here's the thing that I've said. I've said this in a couple on a couple platforms, and I'm pretty sure I've said it on Locked On Grizzlies as well. It's going to blow some of you away when you first hear, but you gotta you gotta know who you're dealing with here. We're talking the Grizzlies, we're talking Taylor Jenkins, and we've got a big enough sample size. Uh, to be able to even say this, but Gigi Jackson's rotation spot isn't promised right now at the start of the season. We're not talking about Gigi Jackson as a starter. We're talking simply as a rotation player. Again, there's going to be a backup point guard that's probably going to be in a situation. Let's say, you know, Luke Kennard is re-signed. You're going to have Luke Kennard. You're going to have Vince Williams Jr. That's three guys right there. You're going to have Brandon Clark. That's four. The Grizzlies, uh, like, let's say they they want to play 10 because they like to go nine. Santi Aldama, right now, he he's the more experienced player. So it feels like you'd be choosing between Santi and Gigi. And right now, I think Taylor Jenkins would go with Santi Aldama in that situation. Not saying I would, but uh, the experience, the shooting, uh, the playmaking, all of those things. Now, with all that being said, this is Gigi Jackson's chance to change his mind. Because when I talk about Gigi Jackson's numbers, the efficiency numbers, all of it goes back to the idea that Gigi Jackson has to prove now that he's a winning player. We know Gigi Jackson can score the basketball. And quite frankly, uh, a lot of Grizzlies fans, you, you didn't care whether the Grizzlies won or lost when it got to March and April last season. So when Gigi Jackson was scoring 34, 35 points and the Grizzlies would lose, no one was saying, man, oh, if he makes the extra pass, there were two minutes in the fourth quarter. The Grizzlies win the game and Gigi has 27 points instead of 34. No one was saying that. No one cared. It was it was let Gigi cook. Let him, you know, oh, let him go for 40. Let him go for 50. And it was fun to watch, you know, a, a 19-year-old blossom, you know, as an NBA score. But we know there's more to scoring in this game. And we saw him make a, a nice pass. You know, it was like a little loop around pass under the basket to Zach Eady for one of his two assists. But we need to see more of that from Gigi. Gigi can get to the rim. I mean, uh, he is, for 6'9", guy, he's so fluid and a lot of times when he gets to the rim, he's just looking for his shot. And a lot of times, period, when Gigi Jackson has the ball, he's looking for his shot. In this game, Gigi Jackson finished with 16 points, right? That's the good. 20 shot attempts led the Grizzlies. I think the next closest was Jake LaRavia, 5 of 14 shooting. He had a solid game as well. Uh, but Zach Eady was next behind that, 7 of 12 shooting. Gigi Jackson was 6 of 20 from the field, 0 of 10 on three points. If Gigi Jackson passes up a couple of those three-pointers or even makes a couple of them, the Grizzlies win this game. This is just about winning basketball. Um, do I think Gigi Jackson is capable of playing winning basketball? Oh, of course. I'm not doubting it at all. I'm just nitpicking after one summer league game, and it's to point out something that we – needed to point out throughout the offseason that now Gigi Jackson and all the nice scoring things that we cared about and all that, now it's going to be about making the right play because uh, when Gigi was scoring and doing all those nice things, he did have, a, you know, a lot of moments where it's like, oh, don't forget he's a rookie. But we didn't – I mean, most people didn't care because it was like, uh, Grizzlies, I mean, you're not playing for a playoff spot or anything, but it's going to be different this upcoming season. When you're in the third quarter and it's 77 to 77 and Gigi Jackson takes a bad shot and it leads to an 8 0 Denver Nuggets run, and people point to that shot as a turning point in the game, it's going to be a little bit different. 
I, again, 100% believe that Gigi Jackson is going to be a winning player. Uh, the scoring is, is is good. I mean, late late in that game, late in overtime, he took over for a couple possessions, and it looked like he was about to lead the Grizzlies to the win uh, when the Grizzlies were up 95-93, and the Jazz ended up scoring the final four points. So there were moments. And one thing that I got to point out is 6 of 20 stands out, but it was confident shooting. Uh, one thing that I wanted to see from Jake Lorega and G.G. Jackson in particular, I wanted them to, to to feel like they were the best players on the floor. Go out there, get shots up, and I'm shooting because check, you know, I I, I got that credibility, and that's how it felt when G.G. Jackson had the ball. Like he looked confident even after every three pointer. I mean, the guy was 0 of 8 and still letting it ride uh, from three point range and finished 0 10 on three pointers. But uh, confidence. Not a problem with Gigi, and that's going to carry him a long way. But if you want to nitpick, you want to say, man, Gigi Jackson, how can he get better to solidify that spot in the rotation? It's making those winning plays. Because you know who knows that he's only averaging one assist? It's Taylor Jenkins. They're, they're, they want Gigi Jackson to be a big part of this team's future. Again, like we've seen him towards the end of last season guarding per, top perimeter options and things like that. Uh, on on the defensive end, so uh, there's a big investment there, and the scoring is is plus at this point. I think what the Grizzlies want to see is the playmaking from Gigi. They want to see him draw double teams and kick it out to guys instead of drawing doubles and trying to split them and and score baskets over contested uh, defense. So I think he's very capable of that. Gigi likes to shoot the ball. It's it's that's no secret. He likes to shoot the ball. He will tell you that he likes to shoot the ball. Uh, but he's going to have to make some the right plays throughout summer league too. So that's something to monitor. That's something to watch. Uh, it stood out in this game. Gigi Jackson is is more efficient. The Grizzlies probably will win this game against the Utah Jazz. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you, 24-7 sports, covering the top – Sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now, available on the free Fire TV channels app. Coming up next on Locked On Grizzlies, we're going to break down the next Memphis Grizzlies game. So that one's out of the way. You got the Memphis Grizzlies uh, against the Utah Jazz on tomorrow. Uh, well, on today's after on today, they'll get um, the Philadelphia 76ers. So on tomorrow's show, We'll be recapping that as well. I believe Joe Molinax is going to be back with me for that one. So uh, the dynamic duo will be back uh, together uh, for that game. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But until then, continue to like, rate, review, comment, and subscribe to all things Locked on Grizzlies. Look, we really appreciate it. We really appreciate all the support that you guys have been giving us. Remember that Locked on Grizzlies is free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, I'm DeMichael Cole, and we'll see you. Unlocked on Grizz.